Adam Savage here in my cave with a show and tell for you here. And it's one that frankly, I'm kind of surprised I haven't showed or told yet. Um, we were just talking about this on the podcast and realized that this should be a show and tell today. The fact is, uh, the very first one day build that I ever did, which was a case for my Blade Runner Blaster, is indicative of a very specific kind of build that I become quite obsessed with on a serial basis, which means I have indulged in this build many times. And that is a case for a thing that I have a surpassing amount of affection for. I think there's actually a whole gallery art show that I could have called Vessels, which is boxes that I've built to hold on to the things that I love. And in this box is maybe one of my favorite three or four things in this entire building. Yeah, seriously. Uh, and when you have something that you love that much, you want, you want a case to be able to transport it, to be able to talk about it, to be able to display it, but also I always end up with this desire that the case becomes part, well, let me put it this way. When I become obsessed with an object, I don't just become obsessed with the object itself, I become obsessed with the interaction I'm gonna have with the object. So uh, is it gonna feel like the real prop? Is it gonna have a similar weight to it? Is it gonna convince me in the room, not just visually, but also tactily? And I ask the same things from the cases that I make. So I, I'll stop the suspense. This case houses the most beautiful Chewbacca mask that you can imagine, built by my friend Tom Spina and his incredible team of craftspeople uh, on Long Island. Um, he's one of my heroes. He's done some incredible restoration and some magnificent world-beating uh, prop replication and construction, and this is one of his finest pieces. Um, you know how much I love Chewie. Uh, he's the greatest non-human character in film, full stop. Uh, and when I got this mask, from Tom for my Chewbacca costume, I knew it needed a case to display it. I also needed to transport it to cons and to be able to work with it. So I wanted a functional case and that's what this is. And I'm gonna take you on a tour through it. But at the highest level, I also wanted to be able to see it. So after I built the box that housed the mask, I cut this hole in front, put some acrylic in there, made a border, and then once I made the border, I started to see what this case wanted to be, and I started putting these borders all around. And you can see the, the, the way in which the case goes together, these borders have a kind of a Star Wars universe aesthetic to them. Uh, now I've got the Mandalorian thing here, and I know that that sort of ends up speaking to it being a kind of a trophy. And I recognize that that's a problematic way to display your Chewbacca. When I told my wife I was doing this, she was like, are you sure you want to display Chewbacca like that? That would presuppose that I had a choice in the matter. I just love this mask, and as I was building this case, this is the case that came out of that process. So I just had to go along for the ride. But let's take a look inside, shall we? Uh, obviously, it has an integrated lighting system. I've got a removable battery port up here that houses eight double A's. It was non-trivial for us to find eight fresh double A's in this building this morning, and yet we did. Uh, and inside the box, when we open it, we uh, four latches separate the top from the bottom. I guess I can turn that off. And now we see Chewbacca. But there's more to this case than just that, right? So here is Chewbacca sitting on a head, right? So I made this nice head that holds him upright and does not overly stress any parts or pieces of him. Um, I can put him in this case and feel confident he'll make it from point A to point B with a mi minimum of uh, uh, being jostled or damaged. Um, and then inside here, I have a secret compartment. Well, it's a drawer that you can't open until you push where is it, where is it? Ah, yeah, here we go. Until you pull on a little latch back here. And this is where I keep all my Chewbacca makeup stuff. I've got some hairspray here. I got some scissors. I've got some picks and hairbrushes for styling. What is that stuff? Fixer spray and black eye makeup. Super key if you're gonna cosplay as Chewbacca, you gotta do black around your eyes. Like gotta get that raccoon action going on, some little safety pins, basically everything I might need 
for a little Chewbacca cosplay is also housed in here. Now, I don't believe that I have walked you through the true glory of this mask. I've worn this uh, to more than one con, but let me also explain that when Tom Spina built this for me, he actually matched the original way in which Stuart Freeborn built the original Chewbacca mask, which is it has some, what do you call, uh, 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 what do you call this? Passive secondary animatronics? <laughs> I don't know. Um, basically, Chewbacca's famous for as he roars, his lip curls. And Tom built that functionality into this mask. Uh, there is a small cable that goes from the bottom jaw to the upper lip. So when I open my mouth inside this mask, my jaw opens this lever, which opens the mouth. And now you can see, there it is. See the lip curl up there uh, on the right hand side? That, that is such a bona fide chewy look. That is, it's just perfect. Now there's a reason it's perfect. Tom built these for industrial light and magic. These teeth are cast from original Chewbacca teeth. The underface, the underskull, is actually built from a scan of Stuart Freeborn's original underskull. So in every, oh, and the hair has been matched by Tom to the original in the archives. Now I said, when I put it on, I opened my mouth. How did Tom get all that spacing right for my head? Well, I actually sent him one of the castings of my head. And so the inside of this chewy mask is actually built off of a fiberglass underskull made off of my skull. And here, if you look inside, you can see how simple the mechanics are. That's the chin cup. Uh, it's padded with some felt. There's the spring return on the jaw. So when the jaw opens, there's the spring. And then here, this is a little bit of uh, cable used for model airplanes, for the ailerons of model airplanes. And it goes from the bottom jaw here, whoop, all the way up to the top lip. There you can see here, it goes up to that top lip. And when Chewie opens his mouth, or when I open my mouth, his lip curls. Um, one other thing about Chewie is, you know, I put him in this case and I smooth his hair back and I get Chewie looking all kind of clean in there. And the fact is, Chewie doesn't ever look that neat. Chewie is a bit of a mess and that's what's so great about him. You gotta get that little uh, Empire Strikes Back kind of cool thing he's there. See, see, Empire right there, all of a sudden you get to see that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's a little bit of, yeah, the, you have to get hairspray on this. You wanna cosplay your Chewie right. The hair goes back on the chin, it doesn't go straight down. Otherwise you look like Joe Baca, Chewie's ne'er-do-well cousin. Uh, so let me put this on for you so you can see the full lip curl action. Here we go. And so then there is a, gotta secure the back. Yep. So there's a little bit of a, a, a Velcro closure in the back that holds it onto the back of my skull. And then I open my mouth. Oh. <laughs> I will tell you, from such a simple mechanism, one of the most expressive characters in cinema. Uh, Peter Mayhew told me the last time I had dinner with him, which was about three years ago, three and a half years ago, he said that uh, when he got on the set of The Force Awakens, they handed him a Chewbacca mask that weighed like five or six pounds and had all these servos in the top of the head for activating all these parts. And he was like, take this monstrosity away from me and bring me a mask that does one thing. Cause that's chewy and you don't need anything else. Am I right? Thanks for watching.